Hey Geography Peeps, welcome back to Flag Friday. It's good to be back after this little quick hiatus. I love doing these episodes because you guys get to see me in my natural habitat. This is my front porch, and uh, I don't know if you guys can see, but right there, that's a ramp that Geography Peep Mark K bought for my family so that my dad could come in and out of the house easier with his wheelchair. So thank you, Mark K, for buying this for my family. Anyway, yeah, I hope you guys really liked the East Timor episode. You guys, you guys know how I feel about exclaves, so mm, yeah. So now, let's discuss and dissect that flag, shall we? Now, East Timor's flag actually looks pretty cool. I mean, it's simple yet bold. Everything a flag should be. First of all, the flag is made up of a red field with a black isosceles triangle on the left hoist side, superimposed on a larger, longer yellow triangle, also based on the hoist side, with a white five-pointed star on top of it all in the center of the black triangle. According to the Constitution, the yellow triangle represents the traces of colonialism as East Timor was a former Portuguese colony. Also, technically, the Dutch had their hands in that whole deal, but nobody really cares about that. The black triangle also represents the obscurities that the country has gone through and still needs to be dealt with. In other words, East Timor has a lot of tragic incidences that have been kind of like swept under the rug that they partially blame Indonesia for and they partially blame the media for not reporting and that still need recognition. The star represents the guiding light of the country and is white to represent peace. And finally, the red stands for the struggle for national liberation, which, okay, I guess it kind of qualifies. So here you go. By the way, our favorite Kiwi, Jared, animated that this time. Potter's on a little bit of a vacation, so he couldn't do it this time. But Jared, thank you for filling in, and you rock, man. Thanks. Also keep in mind, before East Timor was independent, they were part of Indonesia's Timor Timur province, which was basically just the entire island of Timor until they got their independence, and then the west side became part of the East Nusa Tenggara province, and then East Timor was just independent. When they belong to Indonesia, they have this kind of lame flag with a lame coat of arms on it, with a golden shield containing wreaths of wheat and cotton enclosing a little roundel with a traditional Timorese house, all atop a traditional headdress. Speaking of which, the new coat of arms was adopted five years after independence in 2007 and looks way better. The coat of arms includes a curved red pyramid with a black core and a yellow outline. This symbolizes the highest peak, Mount Ramlo, or also Mount Tatamailao. Inside the black core is a star with five rays of light and an open red book atop an industrial gear. On the left and right is a rice bushel and ears of corn, and under all of that is an AK-47 assault rifle as well as a bow and arrow. Under the entire image is a ribbon banner with the words Unidade, Axao, and Progreso, meaning unity, action, and progress. Around the entire getup is a circle band with the words written in Portuguese again, República Democrática de Timor-Leste, with the acronym below it all. They've gone through quite a few coat of arm changes over the years, each one applying to the respective country that took over them, like Indonesia or Portugal. Also keep in mind, prior to independence, they were controlled by the UN for a couple years, so they had this flag, and also they were controlled by Portugal prior to 1975, and for the longest time they were considered both a colony and a province, so they were under the Portuguese flag. So there you go, East Timor symbolism gives you a story of an ongoing conflict, yet the willingness to move forward with a relatively simplistic format. Good for you, East Timor. This has been Flag Friday. You've just been flagged. Stay cool, stay tuned.